Hey everyone and welcome to the video. Uh, today's video is basically just going to be a quick uh, overview of something that actually came to my attention over over a week ago. So as you can see from the date on this article, the 7th of July, I did actually receive a notification of this, um, but basically just didn't get around to making a video. So I thought since I've got a few minutes, I'll sit down and just quickly go through this. So essentially this, uh, this article is basically just discussing H.266 and um, in the, in the, well, in the past month, obviously there's been a few hilarious videos posted up from Ninjishin, um, basically tearing um, Quantum TV apart with regards to his lack of understanding of what H.265 is and how it relates to the TV and media industries. He, for some reason, seems to think that H.265 is some sort of um, picture profile or preset that will actually enable you to make use of 12-bit uh, data within a 10-bit panel. But anyway, obviously, if you want to check those videos out, uh, pop across to Ninjishin TV. Um, just in terms of general knowledge, in terms of um, TVs in general as well. So, um, highly recommended his channel. Um, I'd recommend most people to stay away from Quantum TV's channel. But if you do want a context on the issue, obviously just go go see his videos on the LG CX and his reasoning for why he doesn't actually recommend them. But anyway, back to the actual article. So, as I said, this this article was actually posted on the 7th of July and essentially it's from the parent company so uh, Fraunhofer HHI and basically I'll just quickly read through it so Fraunhofer HHI the company behind the 4 and 265 video codecs has just unveiled its latest creation the aptly named H.266 just as the world has finally gone around to adopting HEVC or H. 265, we get a new version that will offer the same quality at about half the file size. H.265 video encoding, also called versatile video coding, so VVC, promises to show in a new era of lightweight 4K streaming, not to mention the possibility of recording 8K video and high res 360 degree formats without having to acquire boatloads of storage in the process. So essentially, this is how we're going to actually push the TV and media industries in, in order to try and push through and make use of those all of these new 8K TV panels that seem to be getting pushed onto us. Um, in previous years, obviously 4K adoption, whilst primarily back then, obviously a lot of stuff was still either media based, so via physical uh, disc, so Blu-rays, things like that, or they were via satellite receivers and terrestrial TV providers. And that's where basically I think it bottlenecked and their capabilities over terrestrial TV got to the point where you just couldn't make use of any of these newer technologies. I think that's where H.266 and 8K and a lot of other things that come with that might actually benefit because I know here in the UK, for example, I worked for Sky uh, a little while back. And one of the things that they man mentioned even a few years back now was the fact that they were trying to go away from uh, satellite dishes with a uh, coaxial cable in uh, favor of actually uh, going after a digital system. So essentially it's just a, a physical box that you plug into your wall and essentially all your picture and audio is sent via your internet uh, as opposed to being sent via a physical cable which is uh, the current setup that Sky UK have here in the UK and probably across most of Europe as well. With this obviously it means that if with this type of codec with H.265 and uh, 266 uh, in particular it will mean that they can actually push through more data. So obviously the, one of the things about 8K and everything that will come beyond, so be it 120 hertz, be it 12 bit, whatever the, the advancements are in the coming years, the, the main thing is how do we actually get that content? How do we make use of it? Because it's pointless having um, the capabilities of these technologies and not actually be able to play anything back on it that does actually benefit from it. Yes, you can upscale 4K, but that's pretty much the same as what the 4K TVs have been doing for quite a few years with 1080p content. It does a decent job, but you're never gonna to get to that point where that 8K TV is actually being fully utilized until you get things like this that actually allow you to essentially give you not quite well, it'll be close. So obviously with this kind of compression, it's never raw. So it's never um, the very best of what that image can look like, but it's probably the very best that you can actually make use of. So for example, for those who are into photography and videography, they'll they'll be familiar with raw files and how large those files are. And obviously a lot of that, the, the, the concept behind raw photography and things like that is more the manipulation of the data as opposed to um, just seeing files in their raw 
uh, raw format so it's, it's more a case of being able to edit it and um, adjust it after the fact uh, but with this obviously you will with all codecs you always lose a tiny bit of uh, detail that that's always the case but essentially if they can make H.266 good enough to the point where the quality is still the same as what we, we used to on 4k and the file size is reduced by half essentially what that'll probably mean is you're getting 8k files probably not the same size but maybe only one and a half times larger or twice as large because essentially obviously you're quadrupling the the pixels um going from 4k to 8k you're going to basically end up with four lots of 1080 uh, sorry eight lots of 1080p in, in that uh, image in order to make up that 8k so essentially this is this is just a, a little overview what i'll do is i'll link this actual article down down below as well but um for anybody else out there who's interested in these kind of things and obviously these kind of codec they are adopted by other other industries as well so as, as you can see here the heif image format that was implemented by apple um basically came almost directly off this sort of technology and it was similar with the uh, HEVC format that they actually use when uh, for most of my re videos that, that I'm actually recording on the phone so I'll actually record all of my uh, videos in HEVC or H265 um, and then I'll, I'll edit and manipulate them in that way um, that's how I've, I've always done it on these phones and on the iPhones in particular it does perform very well considering how much data and how much um, bitrate you can actually uh, make use of using other tools so obviously the internal app I think it's somewhere I can't remember the exact figures but I think with Filmic Pro you can obviously push it to 100 megabits and beyond um, I'm not 100% sure but I think the the internal camera app generally tends to be around the uh, the 40 to 70 mark depending on what it is and how much data is within the image um, but anyway that's going quite far off track while we don't expect to see so just this section here while we don't expect to see h.266 codecs on mainstream cameras and smartphones for another year or two at least it's likely the breakthrough will help hold off storage ap apocalypse as 8k video and 4k streaming become even more popular in the years to come so per personally i think the main adopters of this kind of technology will probably be people like um, netflix amazon prime uh, disney and obviously apple tv plus as well for all the you guys abroad and um, the ones that have hbo and uh, hulu and all the rest of them these kind of streaming services are probably the primary um, source of uh, early adopters where basically it, it makes sense for them to try and even with 4k so for example if they uh, strip 4k files down to half the size it means that all of a sudden they can bump up their their quality levels and basically give you a much better picture uh, without having to actually make use of more bandwidth it'll be easy on their servers and it will basically just make the whole system easier but obviously whenever the, you have these kind of jumps in codecs um, as anybody who was around back in H.264 days, uh, DivX, uh, ABI, when that first came about, the hardware required sometimes requires a bit of a performance bump. So with with most of what I've read up on this, it does seem like if the device can handle 264, uh, sorry, 265, it'll also be able to handle 266. But obviously at this stage, nobody can guarantee that. Um, and we have no way of knowing that. So possibly somewhere down the line, it may be a case of um, in order to actually make use of this, some of the hardware may need to be updated and some of the um, extra codecs obviously put into these devices, anything hardware based, such as like um, media streaming boxes, DVD players, Blu-ray players, things like that. Most of those probably won't support this, but anything that can get an update. So for example, like an Apple TV, um, your, your built-in ones on your LG TVs, things like that. Most of these in theory, could just get a software update and enable it to work with those. But anyway, just um, just wanted to make a quick video on the topic because um, basically it just seems to have gone under the radar a little. And obviously, even though this is very early on and we may not be seeing anything on this for another two years, it is a, a sign of things to come in terms of how we actually, how we get to the end goal of um, getting making use of those those new TVs that are going to be coming out and already being pushed on us by the likes of Samsung um, and LG to an extent as well as well as many others in terms of 8k and hopefully somewhere down the line 12-bit and and beyond as always thanks very much for watching